Welcome to Electronics. This is the first of screencasts that will be used throughout the course to prep you for the lab. The course is lab-centered. It makes sense to me that this is a very experimental, hands-on course where we tinker. In order to tinker, we need to be a lab. And this is one of the main points of doing screencasts, is we can get rid of lecture time in class and have lab time. During lab, we can stop, take breaks, discuss on the board, small groups or individually, on theory you might need to know. But we're going to start out with you at home uh, watching these screencasts. Please take notes. You can. This is like class, so have your notebook out, take notes, um, and let's begin. I'm going to title uh, each of the screencasts that are relevant to the lab at hand, so the first two at least, maybe three screencasts, are going to be centered around Lab 1. Lab 1 is going to be a, a little bit lame in the sense that you've, you've seen these problems and circuits before uh, and they're going to be somewhat simple. So uh, we're going to look at a, a DC circuit and you're going to verify Kirchhoff's laws. That's not very exciting in my opinion. However, this is going to get you started on the breadboard, learning how to connect more complicated schematic to the breadboard and get your visual brain going. What's going to be really uh, more important on this first lab is uh, Thevenin equivalent circuits. We'll talk about Norton a little bit, really, but really Thevenin. We're going to go with Thevenin and the voltage divider. The voltage divider is going to occur again and again, just not in DC circuits. And so that's something to pay attention to. Um, but let's start off easy. We're going to try to get your intuition um, of electronics up to speed. Or maybe if you didn't have great electronics intuition, uh, let's get it going from the beginning. What is electronics as, our, as, as the first part of our lesson plan? Ohm's law and the fluid flow analogy. I actually like this fluid flow analogy quite a bit. And then the concept of ground. So very briefly, what is electronics? This is my definition, and you might find in your book, or as you look at other sources, slightly different. But I would say it's the study of transferring energy or information via electrons. Um, as you see, there's this tronics uh, trend in a lot of, uh, of, of different fields. There's photonics. This is my field. And I would say it's the study of transferring energy or information via photons instead of electrons. And then there's spintronics. Maybe you've heard of spintronics, maybe not. But again, it would be the study uh, of transferring energy or information via spin, uh, the spin uh, of atoms and, and, and molecules. Um, so let's move on uh, to our fluid flow analogy. Um, next slide here. Okay, two laws we uh, rely upon heavily are Kirchhoff's uh, rules, and they can be written simply as the, oops, let me get my pen there, the sum of voltages around a, a loop um, is going to be zero. You've seen this before. There's also the, the junction rule, which is the sum of currents, and this would be into a junction, is also zero. And these we actually use implicitly, but not explicitly when we do electronics. You'll see we're going to dump these really fast. So these are, they're always implicit. We use them all the time. But those kinds of uh, calculations that you're used to doing, like what current flows through the zister, using these kinds of rules here, uh, we're not going to do a lot of it. However, what you'll find is we're heavily going to be using Ohm's Law, which you probably first saw is V equals IR. And more generally... It's a V equals IZ, where Z is impedance, okay? And impedance, uh, um, it, this is complex impedance, and we'll talk about this very, very soon, week two, when we talk about capacitors and inductors. And I think this will make sense. The nice thing about using Ohm's law, and when you see these fluid flow diagrams and voltage dividers, is we can place the uh, component R with just a block in this block where it could either represent a capacitor or an inductor uh, and we'll do calculations and we'll do experiments uh, where we look at high pass filters, low pass filters, uh, notch filters, uh, basically stuff that makes up the equalizer on your stereo and, and many, many, many other interesting uh, electronic sub-circuits in, in many, many different devices. So we'll be using Ohm's Law a lot, and one way to help you think of it intuitively is this fluid flow analogy. This shows up in the student manual. Um, you can even see I've kind of mimicked their, their water tower with the, the pointy roof. Um, but here it is. Um, so we're looking at V equals IR. This is Ohm's Law. Um, again, later we'll be looking at V equals IZ to, make, to, to generalize it. Uh, I guess real quickly, units, you know this uh, from 200 level. Volts are in joules per coulomb. Uh, R in units of ohms, and, and current I is in uh, coulombs per second. Okay, so what we have here is we can think of, let's start with V, what, what it is. It's on this water analogy, it's a head of pressure. So if you put the water uh, up high, it's going to have uh, some potential energy uh, and 
that is going to be, you know, when we let the, the water out through the pipe, it's going to cause flow, which is current. Um, but we could, and why would you do this? Uh, well, there might be a reason to do this. Put a restriction in your pipe that would be uh, equivalent to resistance, okay? So if I have a, a head of water, a pressure head of water, uh, it's going to want to get to a lower potential if I allow it, and that will allow current to flow. So I can't have current flow without potential. And the more flow I get will depend on, or the less flow will depend on the restriction. If the restriction in the tube is really open, I'll get more flow, more current. Uh, and if it's blocked off, I'll get less flow. All right, to make the analogy a little more complete, and this isn't in your book, we actually need somebody who's pumping the water back up. All right, so this guy over here is supposed to be sweating, working hard. That's the voltage source. Could be a battery pumping the water, and the voltage source, whether it's a battery or some other kind of source, if it's a good voltage source, promises to keep the water level up here. It promises to keep that pressure head. Of course, if you uh, load your circuit and you make your circuit work too hard, you might uh, overwork the pumping guy and uh, and you won't get the kind of um, voltage. It won't keep it. It won't be able to keep up and it'll, it'll tank your voltage. Your voltage will be uh, brought down. Notice also that ground then is going to be uh, um, the level that it drops to. So imagine that we had a pressure head you know, at ground. It has nothing to drop to anymore. Let's take this a little bit further. Okay, now imagine that we have a little more complicated water tower set up. I've eliminated the pump uh, just, for, uh, just for space, but um, now you see we have two restrictions here. All right, so we have our, our pressure head of water. We have flow. Here's ground. Again, there really is a pump pumping it back up. I just eliminated that to uh, make the picture a little neater. Um, this would be a series circuit here, all right, where we have restriction one is, uh, is uh, resistor one and uh, restriction two is resistor two. So if we think about this in terms of potential energy, uh, resistor, we're going to drop some of our potential um, by our restriction one, and we're going to drop the rest after restriction two. So if I, if I start with, uh, um, let's say then the example down here, if I start with 10 volts uh, right here on the, on the high side of my battery, and we'll call this zero, um, and I drop three volts over R1, I'm going to drop the remaining 7 over R2, okay? So I have to end up with 0 here, all right? And you can think of that as this all this potential energy of the water uh, going to 0. Once you're down at ground, you've dropped everything, all right? Uh, and one thing to notice here is that the flow through these pipes, the flow through the pipes are the same, okay? Let's take that even further. Okay, so here's a parallel circuit now, and this one looks pretty goofy here. So again, we have our um, pressure head of water. It looked like that actually got eliminated, the, the label there, but we have our pressure head of water here, and now it's branching off through two pipes, all right? And some of it, uh, more of it, goes through the pipe with R1 because the opening is bigger. It might be uh, the drawing's a little bit muddled here. This restriction is supposed to be tighter, and because this restriction is tighter, I get less flow here. When they join back together, the flow out of here equal the flow in. All right, and so this would just be like uh, um, your, your current rules here. I have flow going in, and it splits down these two paths. In one case, R1 is, uh, um, R1 is more open, so I get more current through R1, less current through R2, but it all sums up. All right, so down here, R1 and R2 drop. Here's the important thing. They have the, uh, the same amount of pressure, all right? So the pressure head up here is the same for both R1 and R2, right, as it is in the, in the analogy here. So the voltage here, you know, if this is 10 volts here, this is 10 volts here. If this is 0 volts here, it's 0 volts for each one. All right, so in the parallel circuit, each re resistor has the same potential difference. That was different than the series one. And then the current splits in this case, which is different than the other case where the current is just the same through the whole set of pipes. All right, here's another thing, and I think you know this as well, but if uh, the resistance in R2 is twice the resistance in R1, then there's twice as much current. So if you have one whole I going in, you're going to have two-thirds I here and one-third I, right? That would be twice as much, and then they would sum to I coming out. Let's move on to ground. Uh, this is often a tricky concept. Ground is a reference point that we arbitrarily call zero. Uh, recall that when you say a voltage, it always refers to a potential difference. And when you're going to build the labs here in this class and use the lab manual, 
what you'll find is we'll say things like 10 volts, 12 volts, maybe 120 volts, and that always means it's in reference to ground. There's no such thing as a voltage at one point. It's always a potential difference. Okay, And so it's implied that we mean in reference to ground. Uh, so ground, here's the symbol for ground right here. Uh, and again, here's our fluid analogy. We're just worried to where all the water drops down to. And then, again, I left out the pump, but it gets pumped back up. So once all our water drops down to here, that's it. We've lost all the potential. Just like in a circuit, we've lost all the potential to push a charge through the circuit. All right, but it could be that really ground, or we can think of sea level, is even lower. But we don't really care. We, that doesn't matter to us. We just care where the ground is in our circuit. So again, when we mean ground, it's just a reference. However, there are some convenient and safer grounds than others. All right, so here's a, a schematic of two equivalent circuits. These are two uh, parallel circuits where uh, here, this one is 10,020 volts and this one is 10,000. So the battery here is promising a potential difference of 20 volts. It just happens to be that the low side is 10,000. Usually we think of it as zero, and this is 10,020. That is the same uh, as zero and 20. And this, these two circuits will behave identically. All right, however, this one could be dangerous if you were at zero volts and then you touch the ground. Then you would draw, uh, you would drop 10,000 volts across your body and that could be bad, all right? So sometimes we use uh, uh, safer grounds like the Earth. And so in this picture here, there's all these free electrons here. Uh, the Earth comes in for safety. Uh, the third prong in your outlet that uh, most devices have these days uh, is basically connected to the Earth, to the local uh, ground earth in your house. And you may see in your basement, or if you look at your house, or if you look at a house that you might be living in now, there's often um, uh, wires connected to pipes because pipes are attached to the earth, pipes are nice metal conduits. Uh, this is a very good reservoir of charge. So basically, uh, more conceptually ground is a place where we can sink and source as much charge as we need to. Um, and this is a very nice reference. Uh, it's, it's a zero point in that, in that sense. Let's talk about this just a little more. Okay, so again, if I have this circuit here and it's 10,020 volts and 10,000, if I wanted to make it safer, I could tie this end to ground. Uh, and ground in the sense of Earth. Again, ground is whatever you call zero, but Earth is often uh, the, the Earth, and they, they use the word Earth instead of ground in Britain. Um, what I would do if I tied this to the Earth is it would sink that 10,000, uh, and the battery, again, promises 20 volts. And so what it would is it would take the circuit down to this one. So I like to think of the Earth as actually really being zero, but I need to, re I need to be a little careful here. Um, I really should say it's zero because it could be in different spots of the Earth or different other parts. They, they could, there could still be a potential difference. Okay? And this is just a reminder, a good battery, again, it doesn't matter about these numbers. The, the point of a battery or voltage source is just to promise that potential difference. And so we could call this 10,000 and 10,020 or 0 and 20, and they're going to behave the same. However, if you're standing on 0 volts uh, and you touch 10,000, that's not a, not a great idea. But if you're at 0 and you accidentally touch 0, the cases of devices are, are often um, uh, tied to ground. Uh, you won't get shocked. You won't draw all the current of the device through you. So Earth uh, is, is a very, very good ground. Typically, when uh, we want to think of a ground in a circuit, we ground the negative terminal of a battery. We actually tie that negative terminal or the voltage source to the Earth ground. You don't have to, um, or at least we think of that. That's a nice way to think about it. And when you need leave the negative terminal, it could be the positive, too, if you want a negative source. But when you leave the terminal uh, that usually you ground uh, ungrounded, uh, then you're floating the reference level. All right, and this can be advantageous because sometimes you might want the reference level to decide whatever it wants to be. Uh, that can be helpful in many circuits. Uh, it can, of course, be dangerous in high voltage circuits because that reference level that you think is zero might float up to 10,000 volts or something different. This is it for our first mini lesson, pretty short. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, a little more of the details in the lab to help you with the lab.